Assalamu alaikum. This is a presentation for medical students by Dr. Mumtaz Ahmed Umar. And today's topic is nasal bone and nasal septum fractures. So the nasal trauma most commonly inflicted upon in the sport in fight and road traffic accident most commonly. Introduction. Since nose is the most prominent facial structure and nasal bone fractures are the most common facial fractures because compared to any other facial bone less energy is required to fracture the nasal complex. Traumatic forces they may act from the front or they may act from the side. The magnitude of force will determine the depth of the injury. So looking at the skeleton of the external nose it consists of the bony and the cartilaginous part the bony part it includes the nasal bones the frontal process of the maxilla and the nasal part of the frontal bone the cartilaginous part include the septal cartilage which comes in the next diagram then the nasal lateral nasal cartilages they are further divided into upper alar cartilages or the major alar cartilage and lower alar cartilage cartilages or the minor alar cartilage so this is the nasal septum the nasal septum in itself has proper separate structure these the from the external structure is different from the internal one so the nasal septum it consists of the septal or the quadrangular cartilage cartilage which is connected posterior superiorly with the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and posterior inferiorly with the vomer The etiopathogenesis of the fractures of septum, nasal septum, it occurs due to the trauma which inflicted on the nose from the front side or below and can result in injuries to the nasal septum. Now what happened to septum? With this injury and as it may happen immediately or as the age progresses if it, uh, this trauma is inflicted in childhood, the septum may buckle on itself the fracture line may run vertically or horizontally or it the septum may be crushed into pieces as in the smashed nose or the fractured pieces of the septum may overlap each other or they may project into the nasal cavity after tearing through the mucosa fracture of the septal cartilage or its dislocation from the vomerine groove can result from trauma to the lower nose without as associated fractures of the nasal bone. So meaning the fracture of the septal cartilage can occur alone without any trauma to the fracture of the nasal bone or they may occur together. Septal injuries with mucosal tears they causes profuse epistaxis because all the blood supply is in the mucopericondrium and when the mucopericondrium get injured it will lead to profuse epistaxis while in those where the mucosa in, in intact the where the mucosa is intact there it may lead to septal hematoma so what are the types of septal fractures they are of two types jarjave and the chevalet so jarjave fracture this fracture it usually occurs from the blows in front of the nose the fracture line it starts just above the anterior nasal spine and runs horizontally this is vertical this is horizontal so runs horizontally backward just above the junction of the septum cartilage with the vomer so it runs horizontal to this line the septal vomer junction whereas the chevalet fracture it this type of fracture results from blows from below this line the fracture line it runs vertically from the anterior nasal spine upwards towards the junction of the bony and the cartilaginous dorsum of the nose so this is the nasal bone this is the cartilage of the bone so it runs from the nasal spine up till this junction bony cartilage junction of the dorsum of the nose this area is the dorsum of the nose just the one which is visible from front the type of nasal bone fractures it can be either depressed fracture or angulated fracture it again depends where the hit is or the blow is if it is from the front then it will lead to depression or if it is from the side it will give angulation 
So the depressed nasal fractures are due to frontal blow. A severe frontal blow will cause an open book fracture. We'll discuss this later. The angulated one is usually from a lateral blow. There may be unilateral depression of the nasal bone on the same side where the nose was hit or the fracture may occur on both the nasal bones and the septum with deviation of the nasal bridge. So if we look at this picture, this is from the front. So from when the, once the blow occur from the front, either it give rise to an open book fracture. Open book meanings the nasal bones they get separated and or there may be a depression once the base is lost or fractured it may lead to depression and once the blow is from the lateral blow either one side may be affected or the both sides may be affected with deviation of the nasal bone so what are the clinical features patient they usually presents with swelling of the nose epistaxis periorbital ecchymosis tenderness to uh, tendon to touch there may be nasal deformity nasal obstruction either due to the septal deviation septal injuries crushing of the septal pieces or the septal hematoma so this it has to be ruled out as the treatment for septal hematoma is immediate evacuation then on palpating creptus may be palpable which is due to the mobility of the fractured fragments or there may also be lacerations of the nasal skin with exposure of nasal bone and cartilage. So once, whenever there is hit on the nose, either in the sport injury or fight, it will most of the time, nine, more than 90% epistaxis will be there. Usually most of the time it gets stopped, but at the time of injury blood, it will come out from the nose or there may be swelling and deformity of the nose as well or mild laceration or big laceration can also occur. As I mentioned, with severe injury, in mild nasal injuries, periorbital ecchymosis don't occur, but if there is a severe injury or close to the eye, as the area around the eye is very loose, so the periorbital ecchymosis or the panda eyes, it usually occur. And we have to look inside the nose to see if there, if there is any septal hematoma. These are small smooth bulging as blood is co collected between the peri ostea, perichondrium and the cartilage. So this blood it has to be removed immediately or aspirated immediately. Diagnosis is basically on history and physical examinations. X-rays may or may not show the fracture and also there is no role of X-ray in the treatment of the patient. Once, uh, when one thing, maybe the x-ray is showing a fracture, but there is no external deformity and there is no obstruction, nasal obstruction, so no treatment is needed. In some cases, x-ray is not showing any fracture, but there is obvious deform deformity. So, we have to check uh, with physical examination and clinical checkup will guide us the treatment. But x-rays should be done right and left lateral views of the nasal bones, bottle view and occlusal views because they have a medical legal significance, especially in those cases which are medical legal cases, fight or uh, things like that where the compensation has to be given. And in extreme cases or severe injuries, CT scan may also be done. So what is the treatment? Treatment is further subdivided into emergency treatment or the immediate treatment the specific treatment related to the nasal trauma and trauma treatment of the associated injuries. So emergency treatment is first you have to check out the airway maintenance. Is there any blockage to the airway that has to be dealt with? And secondly, the bleeding. As I mentioned, every trauma to the nose, 90% it will give rise to epistaxis. So the immediate management for that is pinching of the nose for five minutes. And again, more than 90% of the times, if there is no mucosa, obvious mucosal tear or injury to the mucosa, it will stop the bleeding. The specific treatment is further divided into early treatment and late treatment. And treatment of associated injuries, if there is any 
fracture of the other facial fractures or injury to the eye or like lacerations they need to be treated as well so for the uh, septal fractures recognition and treatment of septal injuries is essential hematomas should be drained as soon as possible otherwise it will lead to secondary bacterial infection which will cause resorption of the cartilage and which ultimately lead to saddle deformity then the dislocated or fractured septal fragments should be repositioned and supported between the mucoperichondrial flap with mattress sutures and nasal packing anterior nasal packing fractures of the nasal pyramid are often complicated with fractures of the septum and both should be treated concomitantly for nasal bone fractures simple fractures without displacement need no treatment while others may require treatment which may be in terms of closed reduction or open reduction the best time to reduce the fracture is either immediately at the time of injury within first one hour once there is no presence of edema or within 7 to 10 days after the edema has disappeared healing of fractures occurs within 2 weeks so treatment the early treatment which is mentioning should be done if carried out before this time however children have faster healing date so in children it goes down to 10 days because it is it is difficult to reduce a nasal fracture after few weeks as it heals by that time so methods for uh, dealing with nasal bone fracture is either by closed reduction or open reduction in closed reduction depressed fractures of the nasal bone sustained by either the frontal or the lateral blow can be reduced by blunt straight elevator guided by digital manipulation from outside like this one if the bone is only angulated then digital pressure alone can reduce the fracture uh, part so firm digital pressure in opposite direction reduces the depressed nasal bridge so these are the instruments which can be either it is done with the hand but once there are impacted fractured fragments or depression then only uh, digital pressure alone cannot help so we need certain instruments so these are the two instruments this is the ashes forceps which is used for the nasal septum fractures and this is the volsham forceps which is used for the fracture of nasal bone then this is the this is the local spray this is the anterior nasal pack this is tilis forceps to do the anterior nasal packing this is external splint to uh, retain the fractured fragment redu uh, reti uh, reduced fracture fragments in blind and this is bupivacaine or any other sedation so the impacted fragments they are fixed with volsham or ashes forceps this is the volsham this is ashes inside the septum for the septum and this is volsham one prong is inside one prong is outside for the bone Bef ashes forceps reduces the septal fractures while volsham forceps reduces the nasal bone fractures so if you look at this picture this part of the nasal bone it is depressed which which needs to be elevated so this is the post op picture you see the deformity has gone similarly in this picture also there is angulated deformity and with the instrumentation and digital pressure uh, it has been corrected complications septum is important in sporting the lower part of the external nose if its injuries are ignored it can lead to septal hematoma septal abscess and these are immediate but later it can give rise to deviation of the nasal septum asymmetry of nasal tip columella and nostril so once you have realign the fracture fragments then these realigned fragments are retained in its position first we apply the steri strips and after applying the steri strips an external splintage is placed this splint is placed for 10 to 14 days like whenever there is fracture of the long bones you put pop cast so this is the splint you can also make this splint with pop open reduction 
early open reduction in nasal bone fractures is rarely required. This is indicated when ghost method fails or when there is communicated a crush injury to the nose. Certain septal injuries are better reduced by open method. Delayed treatment. So, if the patient failed to present early and get treated uh, early and they present after two weeks, then the delayed treatment has to be given. Uh, since the nasal fracture fragments they healed in two weeks so those patients who present beyond two weeks they can be treated for the nasal deformities after about six months either by septorhinoplasty or rhinoplasty thank you